Why Portugal's decriminalization of drugs has backfired. Why are these people like actually so retarded? Like he's actually like a Nazi when it comes to like misinformation online. Like, let me take a picture of the TV. Why is he even watching? The, or is it of his monitor? Why is he taking a picture of a monitor? To, is this supposed to prove a point? The segment was so insane because it didn't backfire. It was just defunded by conservatives and stopped working well. And she even briefly acknowledged it was defunded. But just like it's a casual side detail, it's pretending like it just backfired. 57 minutes! Anna Kasparian and the Young Turks' shameless fear-mongering over drug addicts. I've been an advocate for just a little bit of one. <clears throat> While we're on a bit of a TYT hate train, just a little bit of one. You know, I wanted to take a look at something. Somebody emailed me this. Now, I've been an advocate for drug decriminalization for a long time. The basic argument being that if a person is a drug addict, treating it like a criminal issue is a really dumb idea because addiction will make you do dumb things to get your high. And it just means then you do that and then you go to jail and you don't get medical help. And it's just like, it's just like a lose-lose. Like nobody benefits from this, right? Whereas normally, not for everyone, but for a lot of people, if you just say, okay, we're not gonna arrest you for doing the drug, okay? But if you wanna do the drug, you have to come over to this clean government facility where we have a bunch of like detox uh, counselors and like, oh, hey, would you like a, would you like a candy bar? Would you like a complimentary mint? Well, why don't you come on down here to this like addiction class or something? And then if you do that, like a lot of people end up getting better uh, because like people want to live fulfilling lives, you know? Most people do, they just have to be given the path. And um, TYT released a video saying that Portugal, a country that practiced widespread drug uh, decriminalization, has seen, uh, has seen its addiction numbers explode. So I want to see what's up. I'm interested. Look at J.D. Vance mentioning Suboxone and uh, medical treatments to help people who are suffering with addictions. It's incredible. I mean, can we just address his tone and how much Vance has moderated his messaging since running in the GOP primary for his Senate seat in Ohio? Oh, Vosh, you can't let her compliment a Republican. You got to pause her and hammer her on that. How dumb can she be to not see he's a crypto fascist? Get her, Vosh. He even seems yeah. open to doing more than just, you know, locking people up for drug abuse. And he seems willing to admit that the model worked in Portugal. But as I was researching the story- Oh my God, he's gonna let it stand. Our little Vosh has grown up. Never mind. all right. I was actually shocked to find that tides are turning in Portugal and their much lauded drug reforms are beginning to show cracks and weaknesses. Okay, so let's learn. Okay, so let's, let's go back and refresh our memories of how Portugal reformed their drug laws. Back in 2001, Portugal ended punitive drug policies and instead decriminalized consumption of all drugs for personal use. Consumption- Is she talking so unusual? Fine, I'll go 1.1. Um, okay, so quick refresher for people who don't- How are you changing the speed of her talking to 1.1? Is that like, why not like 1.25, 1.5? Are these steps really not granular enough for you? Like what? No, my understanding of the effects of the drug policy in Portugal are basically just like summed up in the wiki article. I haven't done a huge deep dive, but it seems like there's a lot of good. Basically, it led to an increase in treatment, which is what you want, a massive drop in HIV infections because people weren't using dirty needles. Okay, Vosh, now listen, I'm a huge fan of Wikipedia. Obviously, I love Wikipedia. But the argument is that <clears throat> as of today, the uh, results are not that promising. The first thing you brought up was as of 2012. The second thing you brought up was... We're not sure. You need to click through the link and find out. The third thing that's here is of 2009. This is of 2009. This is of 2012. So none of this is current. The total number of overdose deaths plummeted to the point where, um, here, look, as of 2012, Portugal's drug death toll sat as- Yes, that, that 2012 would be 11 years ago, Vouch. Per million in comparison to the EU average of 17.3 per million, or in other words, about one sixth the, um, the European average. So lower overdose, and that's, that's pretty good. I've literally rolled, I've rolled literally 1000s of blunts. I've stuffed the max amount of weed in a blunt. It would take like smoking 20 plus at a time to OD not to. If you're rolling one, you have to have, first of all, if you don't live in California, you don't even know what good weed is. Okay. So one, you need to be living in California to have access to the purest strains. Okay. Two, you, you obviously you're not going to OD on fucking indica. Okay. You need a sativa strain. So two, the strain is obviously important as well. And number three, I mentioned about having a good wrap and good lighters too, in order to get the purest inhale when you're smoking. <laughs> I'm so <dumb. laughs> sorry. I just read, read a joke. I'm sorry. Uh, I got, <laughs> I got sidetracked for a second. The wrap that you're using and the lighter that you use have to be infused with hydrogen because hydrogen burns pure and cleaner than oxygen and it's going to get you a better burn on your weed and it's going to increase the absorption, right? This is why people, but if you're using weed outside of California, if you don't have a hydrogen lighter, bro, you don't even know how to smoke. Good. That's actually really good. Then it says, and this is new to me, so I'm reading this now live. 
This reduction has decreased in later years. The number of drug-related deaths is <coughs> now almost at the same level as before the drug strategy was implemented. However, this may be accounted for by improvement in measurement practices, which... Yes, yeah, so we see this. Vouch. This is... All of this is as of 2012. That's what... Half of her video is about as of 2012. It looked good. ...includes a doubling of toxic... Toxicological. There we go. Autopsy is now being performed, meaning more drug-related deaths are likely to be recorded. So the argument being perhaps that now that there's a higher standard for identifying drug deaths, or um, it might be either just detecting more than before. Um, also, I believe drug use has been increasing on average all over the Western world right now. So it's possible that to an extent these increases have also been just a, a global trend during the same period. Like, we, if we really want to figure out like who's right or wrong, we can just do this. Um, Portugal decriminalize all drugs results. Or just do this, and we'll see if anything comes up. <clears throat> oh, we get an article from January. Is that July? March, April, May, June, July. Okay, from July. <clears throat> uh, don't I have a Wapo account? Hold on. <clears throat> Sorry, that wasn't me. <clears throat> Once hailed from the little, 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 little. Porto, oh, Porto's bakery, best good Cuban bakery, Portugal. Addiction haunts the recesses of this ancient port city as people with gaunt, clumsy hands lift crack pipes to lips, <laughs> syringes to veins. Poke, 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 poke. Authorities are sealing off warren like alleyways with iron bars and fencing in parks to halt the spread of encampments. A siege mentality is taking root in nearby enclaves of pricey condos and multi million euro homes. Portugal decriminalization or Portugal decriminalized all drug use, including marijuana, cocaina, and heroin, the scary drug, in an experiment that inspired similar efforts elsewhere, but now police are blaming a spike in the number of people who use drugs for a rise in crime. In one neighborhood, state-issued paraphernalia, not pornography, <laughs> powder blue syringe caps, packets of citric acid for diluting heroin, litters sidewalks outside an elementary school. <clears throat> Porto's police have increased patrols to drug-plagued neighborhoods, but given existing laws, there's only so much they can do. On a recent afternoon, an emaciated man in striped pants sleeping in front of a state-funded drug use center awoke to a patrol of four officers. He sat up, then defiantly began assembling his crack pipe. Officers walked on, shaking their heads as Hunter Biden loaded his pipe and smoked. <laughs> Portugal became a model for progressive jurisdictions around the world embracing drug decriminalization, such as the state of Oregon, but now there is talk of fatigue. Police are less motivated to register people who misuse drugs, and there are year-long waits for state-funded rehabilitation treatment, even as the number of people seeking help has fallen dramatically. <clears throat> The return in force of visible urban drug use, meanwhile, is leading the mayor and others here to ask an explosive question. So time to reconsider this country's globally hailed drug model. These days in Portugal, it is forbidden to smoke tobacco inside, or I'm sorry, outside a school or a hospital. It's forbidden to advertise ice cream and sugar candies, and yet it is allowed for people to be there injecting drugs, said Ri Moreira. Well, I don't know how to pronounce it. Porto's mayor. We've normalized it. I will say something that was kind of funny is in California, I'm pretty sure it is the case. It's like, it's very strange, but um, you can be outside smoking a joint on the street, but you can't drink alcohol, <laughs> which is interesting. I'm not saying that whether that's good or bad. That's just, that's funny to me. <clears throat> Re-examining drug policies. Cocaine production is at global high. Seizure of amphetamine and methamphetamine have exploded. The multi-year pandemic deepened personal burdens and fomented an increase in use. In the United States alone, overdose deaths fueled by opioids and deadly synthetic fentanyl topped 100,000 in both 2021 and 2022. High scores, boys! Back-to-back -back records! Or double what it was in 2015. According to the National Institutes of Health, uh, Fauci, anyone? 85% of the U.S. prison population... Wait... The national, he's the head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. My bad. Fake. I just spread some fake news. 85% of the U.S. prison population has an active substance use disorder or was jailed for a crime involving drugs or drug use. Across the Atlantic in Europe, tiny Portugal appeared to harbor an answer. In 2001, it threw out years of punishment-driven policies in favor of harm reduction by decriminalizing consumption of all drugs for personal use, including the purchase and possession of 10-day supplies. 
Consumption remains technically against the law, but instead of jail, people who misuse drugs are registered by police and referred to de uh, dissuasion commissions. For the most troubled people, authorities can impose sanctions, including fines, and recommend treatment. The decision to attend is voluntary. Other countries have moved to channel drugs, drug offenses out of the penal system too, but none in Europe institutionalized this route more than Portugal. Within a few years, HIV transmission rates via syringes, one of the biggest arguments for decriminalization, had plummeted. From 2000 to 2008, prison populations fell by 16.5%. Overdose rates dropped as public funds. None of the, oh. Our quote. Um, does this like cite research or anything? Um, <clears throat> or is it just an article? This is just an article. This isn't really research, huh? I wonder if there have been any studies done on this yet. Oh. 20 years of Portuguese drug policy developments, challenges, and the quest for human rights. Abstract. Portugal decriminalized the public and private use, acquisition, possession of all drugs. Arguing that the Portuguese drug mo policy model has proven influential enough to em emancipate drug use from the stigma that associates you know, this cri article critically discusses the developments and current challenges the Portuguese drug policy confronts, namely the growing diversity of drug use patterns observed in Portugal as well as in Europe to the send international and national legal instruments. Conclusions indicate that these policies are marked by contradictions and ambiguities that have permeated its history since the very beginning and modest ambitions, particularly regarding the implementation of harm reduction measures. Moreover, the pol pol polemical Supreme Court judgment, polemical Supreme Court judgment that reestablished in 2008 drug use as a crime when the quantities at play exceeded those required for an average individual use of 10 days might have impacted the landscape. Of the okay. Use of heroin and cannabis also increased in Spain and Italy where drugs for personal use were decriminalized many years earlier than in Portugal. I didn't know they were decriminalized for personal use in Spain and Italy. I'll give it a look later. So there are a lot of factors here, but okay, let's, let's see how it goes. Remains technically against the law, but instead of jail, people who misuse drugs are registered by police and referred to dissuasion commissions. For the most troubled people, authorities can impose sanctions, including fines and recommend treatment. The decision to attend though is voluntary. So the so-called harm reduction model was born. That's what happened in Portugal. And the initial results were absolutely promising. In fact, TYT covered Portugal's success story many, many times. Here's one example from 2012. And back in 2000. Oh my God, vintage Jenk. One, Portugal decriminalized all drugs. Now we talked to you about. Why did, how, when did, how was, how did Jenk look like a giga chad? What the fuck? You ever know, like. Uh, the Portuguese experiment before and then it seemed that it was going well with the numbers. Well, a new report is out after 11 years of this experiment. How has it gone so far? Well, the numbers are in and they are astounding. The number of drug addicts being treated has dropped by half in Portugal. They cut the rate by 50%. 50. What happened? I thought it was supposed to go up. No, there's far less drug addicts. And if you think that's an impressive number, drug related diseases, including STDs and overdoses have been reduced by an even greater number. Look, he wasn't lying. At that moment in time, August of 2012, uh -oh. data indicated that HIV transmission rates through shared syringes had plummeted. And other metrics illustrated the success of the decriminalization policy as well. From 2000 to 2008, prison populations fell by 16.5%. Wow. Overdose rates dropped as public funds flowed from jails to rehabilitation. There was no evidence of a feared surge in drug use. The decriminalization policy in Portugal was so successful that in 2009, while writing for the Cato Institute, Glenn Greenwald reported- Man, we are like really, really, really backloading the drop here, aren't we? I feel like preempting this information with this much is like, oh man, you know? Yeah, it's like the uh, the first shoe dropped really early on and I feel like I'm watching somebody climbing a ladder, like holding the shoe out with one hand and climbing out with the other, like getting ready for the- What? Biggest other shoe drop possible. Oh, cause she's climbing the ladder to drop the sh shoe? Uh. <clears throat> on an elevator up to the top. That quote, none of the parade of horrors that decriminalization opponents in Portugal predicted and that decriminalization opponents around the world typically invoke has come to pass. And he was right about that. But things have unfortunately begun to shift oh. in a scary direction. Uh, the the Officials in Portugal, including the very architect of decriminalization in the country, say they're noticing a steep spike in the number of people suffering from addiction. A newly released national survey suggests the percent of adults who have used illicit drugs increased to 12.8% in 2022. And that's up. Wait. Oh, wait. Hold on. That was in the Wikipedia article we just looked at. And there's some other worthwhile information we might want to take a look at. Wait, was it? I thought the Wikipedia article, all the data cut off at like 2012. This is in 2022. Yeah, does she mention it? Up from 7.8% in 2001. In other words, there are now more adults reporting illicit drug use today compared to the year the decriminalization policy was implemented with the very intention of lowering the prevalence of drug abuse. Portugal is still doing- Nope, she doesn't mention it. Okay, so, wow. Um, mm -mm. Reported lifetime use of, quote, all illicit drugs increased from 7.8 to 12%. Um, lifetime use of cannabis increased cocaine more than double from 0 0.9 to 1.9 ecstasy heroin. Um, it has been proposed this effect may have been related to the candor of interviewees who may have been inclined to answer more truthfully due to a reduction in the stigma associated with drug use. Or to put it another way, 
Drugs have been legal to use for personal reasons for 20 years in Portugal. People are probably going to be more honest when asked now. If you ask people back when it's like illegal or has been illegal for your entire life, like, oh yeah, you do heroin? Hey, sir, can you tell me if you do this drug that will get you thrown in jail? Um, a lot of people are going to answer dishonestly. There's another factor here that I think is worth looking at. Reported lifetime use of all illicit drugs just means have you used it in your lifetime, not have you been using it for your lifetime. In other words, this isn't a reference to addiction. It's possible that the number of people who have tried cocaine yeah, but doesn't she go on later to say that there are numbers that say that more people are being registered for overdoses and stuff like that? Like, they're not just relying on that self-reported number. There's other data, too, no? <clears throat> pain has gone up, but okay, right? What about addiction? Because that's, like, the harm, right? Like, if a person does cocaine once because they're in college and they want to try it, they want to know what it's like, and they're like, ah, okay, then move on. That counts as lifetime use. Is that? I don't really think that's, like... I don't really think that factors in the way would, like, addiction would, you know? You can make the argument that if, if personal use of these drugs is legal, maybe people will be more likely to experiment with them. But that's not really the harm we're looking to reduce here. I'll take a look at it later, SDL. Um, a lot of words in there, and I am illiterate. Better. Read after what Vosh is reading. It's been proposed. Oh, so proposed. So people don't even know. However, during the same period, the use of heroin and cannabis also increased in Spain and Italy, where drugs for personal use were decriminalized many years earlier than in Portugal while the use of cannabis and heroin decreased in the rest of Western Europe. The increase in drug use observed among adults in Portugal is not greater than that seen in nearby countries that did not change their drug laws. Oh, so it seems like that's, that, so then the reported use probably is true. It's not just that some people are being more honest. I'll take a look at it later, SDL. Um, Why wouldn't he finish reading the last of this bullet point? Why would you not just? A lot of words in there, and I am illiterate better than some European countries, and drug use there is still below European averages. So you've got to look at it all in context, okay? Analysis by the Washington Post found that Portugal's prevalence of high-risk opioid use is higher than Germany's, but lower than that of France and Italy. But what about overdoses? Okay. Unfortunately, that's where things start to look pretty bleak. All right. Overdose rates have hit 12-year highs and almost doubled in Lisbon from 2019 to 2023. Sewage samples in Lisbon show cocaine and ketamine detection is now among the highest in Europe, with elevated weekend rates suggesting party-heavy usage. I am, um, extremely concerned with this standard of data collection. First of all... Wait, why weren't we concerned with the standard of data collection before, though? When we were reporting, like, the dropping of drug... Or why, why is the standard of data collection now an issue? 12-year high? The decriminalization happened more than 12 years ago. Oh, that's true. That's a point that we brought up. So, that's... Like, without more context, that doesn't mean <clears throat> much. Like, maybe overdose rates are higher now because of COVID and everyone's alone and, like, mad and stuff and, and sad. Um, yeah, because, yeah, that's that's why I thought that the 12-year the thing is weird. Why would you talk about 12-year high? What if they're still significantly lower than in, than in 2001? Is that when they passed this policy or 2002? But that's not, that doesn't really reflect, like, the effect of the decriminalization. You would have to compare it to other countries and how theirs have gone up recently and then compare it to the proportion from, like, 22 years ago, yeah. Also, I don't know why we'd be looking at Lisbon specifically. Once you start introducing, like, city comparisons, like, there's a million things that could potentially affect that. How much have... Uh, overdose rates increased in cities broadly around the world over the COVID period. Also, if we're taking a look at a sample from 2019 to 2023, aren't we really just looking at the effect of COVID? Like, can you really fairly say that this is purely representative of the effect of decriminalization if decriminalization has been going on for 20 years, but COVID has been going on for the exact time period you're examining? I also don't know, like, by what, what standard am I meant to, like, like, sewage samples in Lisbon? I'm sorry, I don't really have, like, a preconceived idea as to how I'm supposed to look at this and think, like, oh, well, the sewage samples in Paris would have a different story to tell, you know? You understand what I'm talking about? Like, I, I don't know. Like, yeah, Andrew, who really samples sewage for drug use? That's wild. <laughs> if Lauren and Amy were to ask you to moderate a debate between them, would you? Um, if they wanted to, sure. Oh, here's a question. Oh, but it looks like Lauren's doing it on her channel, which she should. It's good content for her. What are the overdose rates in all of Portugal? Shouldn't that be easy to find? It's If a person dies, they're registered by the police department. Like, shouldn't it be easy to find that? Um, overdoses per year in Portugal. Okay, drug overdose deaths in Portugal from 2008 to 2019. Well, wait, that's not... Do we have any, like, more recent data? FAQ from Europa.eu. Drug overdose deaths. This is total number, not per capita. We get a per capita graph? Oh, good job. Somebody gave me a graph. Okay, but what about per capita? Per capita? Per capita? Per capita? One of these is probably per capita, and I'm just skimming through it fast enough that I can't tell. Distribution of drug-induced deaths reported in 2020... By age, group, and country. Oh, this, you can't, it's a distribution. It can't be a per capita, right? Distribution by age. This is just the ages that people are ODing, I guess, or dying. Group and country? I should okay, say. but what about per capita? Per capita? Per capita? Per capita? 
One of these is probably for Capitan. I'm just skimming through it fast enough that I can't tell. Not sure it's Helitech. What about this? Drug-related deaths. Wait, what? Drug-related deaths per 100,000 people, not age-adjusted. Portugal, EU excluding Portugal. Damn, look. Portugal's got quite a lower rate compared to European countries broadly. Though there has been an uptick here, and the uptick isn't just because this happened before 2019. So I'd be interested in knowing if there's any other um, uh, factor that contributes to that, you know? Uh, poverty, crime, you know? Euro banking crisis. There's a lot that can, that can affect stuff like that. Okay, this is boring. I just wanted to show him Rush. But he's asking good questions. <clears throat> his title here is kind of extreme. Maybe he gets unhinged later on in the video, but I think so far he's asking good questions. <clears throat> Thank you for the OD on weed, um, Patrick. Yes, I've seen you spam the same like 7 million times. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> 